Well, this one's pretty easy, guys. If you own an 09 to 18 Ram with the 5.7 liter Hemi, and you want arguably one of the coolest looking open element intakes currently available, you should be checking out K&N's very popular Black Hawk cold air intake. I like this intake for a couple of reasons. Obviously, number one, in the looks department, it is pretty badass. You've got a black powder coat finish on the aluminum tube here, got a blacked out filter, and you even have a blacked out heat shield. All the hardware as well is blacked out, so that's pretty cool. Other reason why I really like this intake is because of the performance gains. K&N does promise single digit gains in terms of horsepower and torque with out of tune, but we really wanted to unleash the full potential of the Blackhawk intake. So we ran our truck on the dyno bone stock, truck made 290 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. We then installed the K&N filter and we did an appropriate tune on our truck. Our truck ended up making 306 horsepower and 305 pound-feet of torque. Makes for peak gains of 16 horsepower and 32 pound-feet of torque with some pretty nice curve gains on the low end. The curve gains are particularly nice because that's what you'll actually feel when you're driving around. Other reason why I really like the Blackhawk intake is because besides looks and performance, it installs very easily. It's one of the easiest mods you can really do on your truck. And if you're a first timer, I recommend this as a good first mod. You can install this in the driveway with basic hand tools in about an hour or two at most. So if you like the way the Blackhawk looks, go ahead and stick around. I'm gonna show you the entire install step by step. It's a very easy one out of three wrenches on my patented difficulty meter. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. To install your new intake, you'll need the following tools. A three millimeter Allen key, a four millimeter Allen key, a 10 millimeter wrench, a drive ratchet, an eight millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter socket, and a pair of snips. Optional but helpful tools include a knife or cutting tool, a measuring tape, a pry tool or flathead screwdriver, a swivel, and a cordless impact. So before we can install our new intake, obviously we have to remove our factory intake. It's pretty straightforward and the only tool you'll need is an eight millimeter socket and a wrench. We're gonna disconnect the clamp, securing the factory intake tube to the throttle body. Then we're gonna disconnect our air intake temperature sensor. And lastly, we're gonna disconnect our breather hose on the factory air box. Once we've done that, we can pull the entire unit out of the truck. So once you've removed your factory intake system, K&N normally tells you to remove the breather hose and the engine cover. They say in the instructions that you'll have to make a cut to this hose and you're gonna have to add some supplied tubing in the kit. We actually found a way to avoid all that. So we get to skip a step here. You can leave your breather hose in place and you can also leave your engine cover in place. We'll get to all this later. So now that we have our factory intake out of the truck, we have to do some work on the table here. First things first, you can see we're ditching this ugly plastic setup here with the closed air box in favor of that nice open element design that I mentioned earlier. Now the only thing that you need to salvage from the factory intake is your original temperature sensor. It's held in with a rubber grommet, so all I gotta do is twist it by hand, pull it out, put it aside, save that for later. All right, now that you've saved your air intake temperature sensor, you can go ahead and throw away that ugly plastic intake. Next step is setting up our heat shield. Now, the kit does come with two heat shield plates. It's really easy, depending on whether your truck has AC lines near the air box will dictate which one you're gonna use. Our truck has those AC lines, so we're gonna be using the one with the cutout here. So if that's the case for you, you can discard this one. It's really easy to set up the intake. All you're gonna do is take the main heat shield, take the plate of your choice, and set it up like so. Line up all the holes in the plate with the threaded holes on the rest of the heat shield. You're also gonna use the eight button head bolts with a three millimeter Allen key to tighten these down.
All right, now that your heat shield is assembled, you can install the weather stripping. You're gonna place it around the top edge like so, all the way around to the bottom here. And it's helpful to have a pair of scissors or some snips. You might have to trim this once you have it installed. All right, now that our heat shield is assembled with our weather stripping, we're gonna install the support brackets. These are gonna hold the heat shield in place inside the truck. Now to install these, you're gonna need the hardware from the kit. You're gonna need three of the hex bolts, as well as the flat washers and the locking nuts. If you're using the cutout heat shield plate with the AC lines, you're also gonna need this little metal spacer for the longer support bracket. Next, we're gonna install the plastic filter adapter to the heat shield itself. To do this, you're gonna grab two of the larger button head bolts in the kit, and to tighten those down, you're gonna need a four millimeter Allen key. All right, with our filter adapter in place, we can install the rubber coupler for the intake tube. To do that, you're gonna grab one of these smaller clamps in the kit. You're gonna need an eight millimeter socket to tighten down the fastener on here. All right, our heat shield is finally ready to go, so we can move that out of the way. Next step is setting up some stuff on our new intake tube. On the threaded fitting here, you're gonna grab this plastic barb fitting, and this has plastic threads on it, so you'll wanna hand tighten this. Go ahead and fit this right in here. That's for the new breather tube. All right, now once you got that barb fitting in place, go ahead and flip it over to the other side, and you'll see this little hole right here without any threads. You're gonna grab the rubber grommet in the kit, fit the rubber grommet inside here, once you've done that, you're gonna seat your original air intake sensor. All 
All right, so our intake tube and our new heat shield are finally ready for install. Before you go to install your heat shield, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket because to tighten the heat shield down to the truck, we're gonna be reusing some of the factory bolts inside the engine bay. All right, now that our air box is generally in the right location, we're gonna remove some of the factory bolts that I mentioned a second ago. You have one right here, this 13 millimeter head bolt, and that holds the factory air box mounting plate. So you're gonna loosen that, thread it through this hole right here on the support bracket of the new heat shield and tighten it back down. Alright, the other bolt that we're going to remove is this 13 millimeter hex bolt inside the inner fender. If you're using a power tool, it's helpful to have a swivel. All right, now our air box is tightened down. We can install our intake tube onto the rubber coupler that we installed earlier. To do that, you're gonna grab another one of the eight millimeter fastener clamps. You're gonna need an eight millimeter socket to tighten this down. All right, with our new intake tube installed, we're gonna secure it to the throttle body with the rubber elbow in the kit. To do that, you're gonna grab the remaining band clamps in the kit, put the medium clamp on the larger end and the small clamp on the smaller end. To tighten this down, you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket. Next, we're gonna install our new filter. To do that, you're gonna grab the largest band clamp in the kit and fit it over the rubber end of the filter, secure it to this plastic fitting that we installed on the heat shield earlier, and tighten it down again with that eight millimeter socket. All right, with our filter tightened down, we're gonna install the intake temperature sensor extension cable. Depending on what model your truck you have, you will be selecting one of the two cables in the kit. Once you've figured out which one is the correct one, just go ahead and plug it into the existing wiring harness and plug the other end into the temperature sensor. So like I mentioned earlier during our uninstall of our factory intake system, the instructions do call for you to remove your breather hose and cut it. Now if you've been following along and you don't want to cut the breather hose, there is an easy way around it. You're going to take the supplied tubing in the kit and you're going to take that little plastic elbow barb fitting. You're going to set it up like so. You're going to cut the tube for a three inch section here and a seven and a half inch section on top. Once you have it set up like I do, you're gonna push the factory breather hose connection underneath the new heat shield, and you're gonna plug this in place to the barb fitting on the new intake tube. Might sound a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it works. So as you can see, once you've got the K&N installed, it really does clean up the underhood appearance, and you do get some pretty nice performance gains out of it, whether you tune your truck or not. Other than that, that actually wraps up my review of K&N's Blackhawk Colder intake, fitting your 09 to 18 5.7 liter powered Ram. I'm Travis, thanks for watching. Keep it right here at americantrucks.com.